guys, it's Stephanie from Janku, and today we're testing out PenPot's new CSS grid. What I did here is I just created a quick little membership page, and I'm going to, uh, these are kind of not based in reality uh, passes that I've created. You'll notice that in this new PenPot version, we've lost the tools on the left hand side. They've pulled them right in the middle top of the page. It's been a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, I'm actually starting to really like it. So it's basically the same tools here. Anyways, so let's just jump into CSS Grid because this is what we're here for. Now I'm pretty new to this. I just started playing with this feature this week. So I'm also learning. So let's say I'm going to offer four memberships here. And I'm going to put them like this, not too worried right now about placement. So by the way, I created these by using the square tool, um, holding down shift on my Mac, and then using the text tool to add text here. I'll go into in another video um, how to create that if you're not sure. But that's basically how I created all of these different square options. Let me get rid of that and let me just drag this one right in here. Actually what I should have done is I should have grouped these just to keep them together. But I'll go ahead and do that. I'm clicking and holding shift on my Mac so I can select all four of them simultaneously. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the layout. Uh, so I can select grid layout here. Um, there's a shortcut to select grid layout. And um, I can also right click and select it right here. This is the shortcut for the Mac. Um, I'll just do it this way. I'll click grid layout. And immediately you'll notice that it aligned the boxes which is really nice. Let me go here and align center and this will align in the center of the board and let's make some adjustments here. Let's edit the grid and so what it does is it provides us little markings to show where each column and row starts and ends. So you'll notice there's 215 pixels here. Let me zoom in here. And um, if you're a developer, you'll be familiar with some of this terminology. So basically the power of this tool is allowing us to design and to easily take that design and bring it to the developer. And they can basically copy and paste the code that is generated through PenPot and build a website. It's pretty cool. So if we want to see what the code looks like right now, we can go over, there's now three tabs. Previously, there was only design and prototype, but they've added inspect. So we can click on inspect and we can click code. And you'll notice there's a section for CSS and a section for HTML, which you can just copy right here. All right, let's go back to edit grid. So we have these markers here telling us exactly what's going on, what the sizing is. Uh, what I'll do here is I really want to edit this here. So let's adjust that to 25 to match the spacing here. Okay, so you can see that's closed in. So let's say that I want to make a manual adjustment um, right here. I can ho click hold and drag and I can easily adjust the space here and you'll notice that this updates um, the rows to spacing. This is mimicking the measurements, so 243 pixels right here. So we've defined these frames here. And you'll notice these plus signs at the end. If you hit that, it will add another column or row. So in this case, this added another column. And if we click the plus here, it'll add another row. So this is really cool if you want to add more content and it'll automatically sort it. So let's, okay, so I actually did just add this element to the grid. 
However, because there's not ample spacing, it overlapped. So let me edit this here. Get rid of this. Actually, just got rid of those rows. Yeah, that's better. And then for rows, let's change this to pixel. I mean, um, FR, FR, and FR. Okay, cool. So now they're more equidistant. That's good. Let's move this grid. So now if we have a lot of offerings here, this grid can handle it. It can add more and more content. Let's extend this just so we can play around with this board a bit more. So I can easily just double click on my content and just slot them right into the grid. How cool is that? Let's throw this one in there too. Look at that. Let's get rid of these extra rows. I go to edit grid and if I get rid of that one, there we go. All right, cool. So it really makes it very easy. If I were to adjust this, it will automatically space so it's responsive. So we can also add padding on the top and the sides. If you want to add 50 pixels to one side of the grid, you can do that. And put that back and you can see if I make this a hundred on the top this will add padding right here okay so we've played around with a grid but let's say that we want to create a whole web page with grid so let me create a board here okay and I'm gonna make the sections of the website so let's make a header or um, maybe a nav, rather. And let's create a hero section. And let's change this color, make this white, okay. And then let's add a call to action kind of section. Maybe we put some like links here for people to select. And so we'll call this call to action, I guess, or, and then we can do content. Let's give this a boundary just so we can see what we're looking at. And then this section here, which will be the footer. So obviously this is not to scale, but we're just using this as an example. Okay, so that's our footer. So. Now, if we wanted to, again, the CSS grid is great because we build out the design, it creates the code, we can send to the developer. So if we already take care of a lot of things for the developer, it's less work for them to do, and it's more clear what the design is um, with everything spelled out. So what I did was I selected everything. I said, add to grid layout. And then what you can go and do is you can select one of these rectangles, these areas that I've created for each section of the website. And I can go over to grid cell, click area, and I can name this. So I'm going to name this navigation. I'm going to name this hero. I'm going to name this one, what was it, call to action. And this is content. And this is footer. So I'm just clicking um, to select them and then going over to the under grid cell, clicking area, and I'm renaming that. Now I have all the sections of the website. Then let's say that I want to add, start adding content into each of them. Let's add a grid within one of these sections. So what I can do is I already created a grid and let's say I want to put this in our content section. Let's um, highlight these. 
I'm going to create a component. So creating components are cool because you can reuse any element that you build so you don't have to rebuild that same element. It basically copies and pastes it into your assets and then it will be available for you to drag into any of your designs. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's my component now of membership offerings. And what I'll do is I'll drag this right into the content se section. You'll see right there, it actually expanded the section to encompass all of the grid. Let's just extend this here so we can see everything on the site. And I'm going to go over, and obviously this is off-center, so let me fix that there. And these are just aligning it within its own section. I'm saying, and this, this is all transferring as code, too. So, again, when the developer is adding this to the site, it has all this code. If you go back to Inspect you can see that's adding all of this information right in the code. Okay, cool. So we have now added our grid. And of course, if we ever wanted to update the grid within the grid, we can pull out the five day pass. Let's try another way here. Um, we're going to start off with the grid. So what I'll do is I'll create an artboard. Now I'm going to go to Layout and I'm going to select Grid Layout. And it's going to split up into four quadrants, but let's just say that I wanted to create the different sections of this web page. So let's go into Edit Grid. I'm going to expand this here. Actually, I just created another column by accident, but we can easily delete that by hitting this minus sign next to each column. So basically what this shows is um, in developer terms, the FR is somewhat of, it will resize to the size of the um, artboard or web page in this case. So if there's two columns, it's going to expand as wide as it can equally across the whole web page. We can adjust this by changing to auto, pixel, and percent of the web page. So we're going to leave it with this and going to actually remove one of these columns. So now we have two rows, let's add some more rows. So adding rows, we can do that by hitting the plus sign. And what I'll do is I'll add a row, but with the existing area and it'll split into smaller and smaller segments. So let's go ahead, let's add another. And if we want to do it through this functionality in the design pane, we can always expand the rows by clicking on it and we can add rows here by hitting the plus sign. And if we ever want to remove any, we can always hit the minus sign. And again, these, if you hit auto when everything else is FR, it's going to not give you any area to work with because I guess these take precedence. So let's, let's give that FR. And we can adjust sizes here too. So let's say we wanted this to be, take up more of the screen. Um, this bottom section. If I put 2FR, it condenses all the other ones. So again, if um, everything to fit the page, auto will encompass the content. Pixel, will it's like a fixed dimension. So for instance, if I put 100 pixels, it looks the same, but let's say 400 pixels. And what this will do is, regardless of what content you'll, you'll put in here, this will continue to stay this size. So let's put that back. And let's say FR there. This is padding. If we wanted to add 20 pixels, this will add padding of 20 pixels between them. And the same here, but this is padding on the sides of the columns. Um, we can also add padding on the tops and the bottom or the sides of both. This little picture here, the filled in line demonstrates where the padding is going. So yeah, that's CSS Grid. If you have any questions, let us know. Also, please check out some of PenPot's tutorials. Good job guys at PenPot for adding this feature and I look forward to seeing more developments as time goes on. Thank you so much.